family, today I'm going to answer the question, is it true that once saved, always saved? While in a previous video I skimmed the surface of answering this question, I feel that it's important enough to dig deeper. This has been something that many people have asked. It's also a question that has broken many spiritual relationships. There was one Sunday that I was teaching a class in church and someone new asked me this question. Based on my knowledge of God's word, it's a simple answer. However, there is a disclaimer. Most people want the black and white answer and shut their ears afterwards. Now in this case, I tried to fit everything I had to say in one to two minute answer since I followed a flow for the class. As soon as she heard the word but or however, she told me that this question was one that broke the church apart that she had belonged to. The pastor and part of the congregation believed one thing and the other part of the congregation believed the other. After that, the church went into shambles. If you don't think that Satan uses our own spiritual questions against us, you're in for a rude awakening. In that case, he got exactly what he wanted. Before I got into the scripture and answer, I just wanted to show you how important it is to share the truth to these answers and how careful you have to be when giving an answer, because your answer will either give life or death. Hopefully you believe that I am trying to provide life. I would never intentionally or without research provide an answer ignorantly. All right, time to get into this. So let's start with those that believe that it's not true. The common reason for this answer is because you can't just give your life to Christ and live like the world while having a promised heaven. It just doesn't make sense. Now let's flip this pancake over. The other side says that it is true because if it weren't, Jesus' sacrifice would have been in vain. While you do sin, you have been saved. Period. End of story. Now before we move forward, Pause the video if you have to and ask yourself these three questions. On which side do you stand on? Is your answer black and white? And how confident are you that your answer is true? Now before I go over the answer, let's talk scripture. Romans 10 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Based on this verse, there's no question about it. If you do these things, you are saved. Then there's John 10, 27 through 28, which says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish, ever. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Again, this just proves that you cannot be unsaved. Did you know that there's scripture that sounds like contradiction? Hebrews 3, 12 through 14 says, Watch out, brothers, so that there won't be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that departs from the living God. But encourage each other daily while it is called today, so that none of you is hardened by sin's deception. For we have become companions of the Messiah if we hold firmly until the end of the reality that we had at the start. Well, hold on. This one warns us about departing from our beliefs and says that we will only be with Jesus if we hold firmly until the end. So which is it? Ready for the answer? I firmly believe that once you're saved, you're saved. But before you leave the video, remember that I mentioned in the beginning that there was a disclaimer? This is the part that no one likes to talk about. So let's talk about it. I actually believe that all of those verses work together to provide one consistent message, including the disclaimer. Now, if you ask me the first most obvious reason that you could lose, it is because you never had it to begin with. It's unfortunate that some people believe that all you have to do is say a few words to make it into heaven. Then they'll defend the once saved, always saved, because you know, Jesus. Obviously, this is the wrong way to do it. They must have skipped that part in the verse that says you also must believe it in your heart. Then there's the other reason that you can lose your salvation. This one is the most debated. You turn away from God. This is where it gets a bit technical. So no, you can't lose your salvation. However, you can reject it at some point after you accept Christ. Why do you think Paul warns Christians specifically about an unbelieving heart? Aren't Christians believers? And if so, why warn them? Don't consequences usually come if someone doesn't listen to a warning? The final piece of this puzzle is found at the end of that verse. First, we must recognize that when you have faith, this is your reality. You believe it to be true. So if that's the case, then when Paul says that we are companions of the Messiah, 
if we hold firmly until the end the reality we had at the start, he's saying that only if we continue to have faith in God will we be with God. Therefore, it is possible that if you lose your faith in God, you yourself have rejected your salvation. Now, I think I need to make a disclaimer of the disclaimer. This is not referring to the occasional doubts that sometimes believers have. This is talking about a loss of faith. Also, it's not referring to sins we struggle with that we're seeking God's help to get rid of while making a conscious effort on our part. At the end of the day, to some extent, we all sin. It's your perspective of your sin and what you do with it, or the lack thereof, that matters. The expectation of salvation is that you'll work it out and use your gifts in a way that's pleasing to God and to become more like Christ, regardless of the speed. Obtaining salvation does not mean you remain complacent in your sin and think that regardless how you live, you will be saved. That's not how it works. True salvation always leads to progression. Now, let's put everything together and stick a bow on top. Salvation cannot be lost nor taken away from anyone. It is possible to reject it after having accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Continued faith equals continued salvation. Those that are truly saved express their salvation in the way that they live. Well, that's about it. Did that change your perspective of the question? Either way, I'm curious what your thoughts are about the video. Just let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you want to be notified when I post videos, don't forget to lightly tap on the subscribe button and poke that bell icon. As always, let's finish by praying Psalms 19.14 to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Until next time, family, God be with you.